In this video, we're going to talk about how we can evaluate postfix expressions using a stack. If you haven't seen postfix expressions before, you're probably more familiar with infix notations where the operator is in the middle of the two operands. Postfix expressions put the operator at the after the two operands. So here we would have 3, 4, plus, which is 3 plus 4, so that gives us 7. 10, 7, minus is 10 minus 7, which gives us 3. And 2, negative 9 times is negative 18. And 5, 15, divide is 3. So here we have an example of, an inf of a fairly complicated infix notation. And we can convert this to prefix notation, like so. And you'll notice all the operands are in the same order, but the operators themselves are in a different order. But again, this gives us an unambiguous way of writing, whereas here, if we didn't have these parentheses, then we would get a different result. The, the parentheses are required to indicate the order that we want those operations performed. Our algorithm to evaluate this expression is going to require the use of a stack. And what we're going to do is every time we read an operand, we're going to push the operand onto a stack. If we get to an operator, we're going to pop the two top elements off the stack, perform the operation, and then push the result. And we'll continue to do this until we've exhausted the expression, until there's nothing left to do that. Once we do that, there should just be one value on the stack if it's a well-formed expression, and that'll be the result. If we have more than one element on the stack at the time we exhaust the expression, or if we have an operator but there's not two things to pop from the stack, then that tells us that we have an ill-formed expression but we're not going to be concerned with that with our particular example. So let's see how this works evaluating this oper this expression using this algorithm. So we start off, we see 7, so we push 7 to the stack. Then we encounter a 4, so we push that to a stack because it's an operand. Then negative 3 is also an operand, we push that to the stack. Now we reach the multiplication symbol, so we pop twice, and then we perform the operation. That 4 times negative 3 gives us negative 12, so we push negative 12 to the stack. And you'll see that we have two operands next, so we'll push 1 and 5 to the stack. Then we have an addition sign, so we're going to pop the 5, we're going to pop the 1, and then we'll add 5 and 1 together to get 6. We push that to the stack. Next we have the division, and you'll notice that we pop 6, we pop negative 12, and so negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2. We push negative 2 to the stack. Finally, we reach a multiplication operator, so we pop the negative 2, we pop the 7, and we multiply 7 times negative 2. That gives us 7, gives us 14. We push that on the stack. Now we've reached the end of the expression, so the value on the stack, negative 14, when we've exhausted the expression, is our result. So let's take a look at how we'll do this in code. And I think like a lot of examples with, with stacks and queues, it's amazing the power that the data structure gives you to write code that's a lot shorter than you might expect it to be. So in our driver, we're going to prompt the user for an infix notation, and we're going to hope that they give us an accurate one. And then we're going to pass that to our evaluate function and then we'll print what that result is and then we'll prompt them for another. So here in our postfix evaluator class we have four constants add, subtract, multiply, and divide that represent the operators for those functions and we'll use that later to check to see if we have an actual operator on the stack. We could add additional operators if we wanted but we're only going to deal with these four on our for our postfix evaluator. We'll also have a stack, and that's the stack that we're going to use to keep the operands and the results of operations. And when this class is instantiated, we will add a fast stack. And of course, we could, if we fully implemented the link stack or any of the other stack operations, we stack classes, uh, we could certainly use those in place as long as they implement the stack ADT interface. So here's our logic to actually do the evaluation. We have two operands and a result. And you can think, hopefully it's clear that that's the two operands we would pop off when we receive an operator. And then the result would be the value that we push back on when we perform an operation. 
we're going to get each token from the string and store it here. That'll be each piece of the string. And we'll have a new scanner that's actually going to evaluate that string. Now, if you've never seen the scanner used with a string, it works the same way as, as working with user input. So while there's something else left on the string, we're going to get the next token from the string. Now, when we say token, we're talking about one piece of the string. So this, this would be something separated by spaces. You might think, why don't we just work with characters, but then we're going to be limited to, to just single digit positive numbers. By making this a string, we can have an arbitrary length number here. So then if the token is an operator, we're going to take the two operands off and notice the top of the stack is the second operand. The first operand is the result of that second pop. So we do the sort of out of order, it may seem like. And then I take these two operands and I pass them to this function called evaluate single operator. And what that's going to do is it's going to look at what this operator is and apply that to these, these two operands and return the result. Whatever that result is gets pushed back onto the stack and I print that out. Now, if I don't have an operator, then I'm going to push the operand. And I guess really it would probably be better to call this operand versus not operator. Once I'm done with this loop, the scanner should be complete. I close the parser and I return the result. Now notice the result is just whatever the last thing is I pushed on the stack. And I probably should do a little bit of extra work here to make sure that the stack is valid and all that other stuff. But again, this is just going to evaluate. We're going to assume that it's a well-formed postfix expression. We're not going to do a lot of checking. So the is operator function takes a string gets the first character, and then if there's more than one character in the string, we return false because it's not a, it's not an operator if there's more than one character. And then second of all, if it's one of those operations that we defined above, then we return true. So if it's the add operator, the subtract operator, the multiply operator, or the divide operator, it will return true. Otherwise, all of these conditions fail and it'll return false. Where this is necessary is keep in mind that you could have an integer that's plus four, or you could have a negative integer, and that first character, yeah, it's going to be the subtraction operator, but we don't want to we don't want to treat it as an operator because it's more than one character. And then the function to actually do the evaluation, we pass in a character operator, and then depending on what that operator is, if it's the add operator, then we use addition. If it's the subtract operator, we use subtraction, and so on for each of the four operators we get an integer result and we return that result. Both of these functions are used just so that our actual logic and our evaluate method can be a little clearer. So let's test this out. So let's say three, nine plus, and that gives us a result of 12. So now let's pass in what we saw as our example. So we'll say seven first, four, negative three times one, five plus division multiplication. And so there you can see that we get the same result we got before. And you can also see that it's pushing seven, four, three. It's kind of doing the same thing we saw in the slides. And that's how we can evaluate postfix expressions using a stack in Java.